Natasha pointed out, my background, I focus on humanizing aspects of our life, whether it's humanizing our branding, dating, I work with a lot of social media companies. Uh, on this, what we're going to focus on today is three different parts. <coughs> right now, actually, at the end of this 10 minutes, you can buzz me sometimes if I go on. Please, please buzz me, or get it go on going. Uh, we're going to also make this participatory, so this can be the Apollo Theater. I'll be your James Brown, although I'm not a good dancer. <laughs> at the end of this, we actually have a little game yes. that you can kind of take. So don't obviously uh, you know, wait till the event is over, but then I'll give you the website and you can go to it. What we're focused on is three different parts. Is your brand human? Who out here has a brand? Terrific. Perfect audience. If nobody raised my hand, I, I would have, I, you know, had to, who knows? Yeah, I would have left. So everybody has a brand. Most people here have a brand. But is your brand human? And why does this relate to female entrepreneurship? <coughs> well, most of you actually have a huge advantage over me and my maleness. Because what do women have? Or what are they greater at that, than most men? Feelings. Emotional intelligence. And here's the kicker that we haven't always thought about. Everybody and their mother's hairdresser is on social media and is talking about the benefits of it. But what are we doing with those connections? Okay. Can we connect in a way that's more human? Now let's think about it. When you're on Facebook, when you're on Twitter, when you're on Snapchat, how do you know the person that you're communicating with is real? Anybody have an answer for that? How do you know that they're not a bot? Because social media is flooded with, with bots, right? I notice it in particular. A lot of times I feel really flattered. You know, I see on Facebook, I get all these friend requests, and they tend to be these very young, attractive, Russian Maybe they like this dirty white guy. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's a thing. So, and, then I, and then before I feel too good about myself, I realize and say, wait a minute. There are bots, right? But here's the funny thing. We have something called the Turing test, which is talking about when, when a machine can, can emulate humanness. And you can't tell the difference. But let's flip that around. Let's flip around that Turing test. Because a lot of times, when I'm talking to real live people online, the way they communicate, I can't tell if they're a man or a machine. I can't tell if they're human. Just by the way they communicate. I'll give you a couple examples. These are from uh, direct messages I've received recently on Twitter. So who's on Twitter? OK. Twitter, great opportunities. But I'll tell you, it also brings out the worst in communication styles because we feel metric anxiety because it's throwing it right out there. How many followers do you have? How many people you're following? So you feel kind of anxious about that. And people say they don't, but it's, it, it's right there. That, that's baked into their DNA. <coughs> so we feel a certain pressure to up that number. But what are we sacrificing for those, those metrics? Are we raising that metrics so we can project the sense of popularity that we hope will lead to success, right, a wag the dog type of theory, uh, without actually communicating like a human. So these are direct messages. First one, very uh, very simple, probably get this one all the time, just says, thanks for the follow. Well, see, I followed somebody, they followed me back. I look forward to learning from you. See, I feel flattered again, kind of like everything, these Russian women. But then it says, via, at the crowd fire. So let's think about that for a minute, because you, you probably, a lot of you have probably sent this message. Because it's through an automated service that's saying, again, thanks for the follow. I look forward to learning from you. But what's odd about that is if you're not a stupid person, you actually will own up to the fact that this person doesn't want to learn from you. They're sending you an automated message. They want to learn from everybody. Or actually, they don't want to learn from anybody because they're not taking time out of their day to send a message. Here's one that takes the cake, right? Because that one, again, is very simple. But again, if you can move away from your ego, it's automated. I like this one. Hey, David, exclamation point. They're excited. This is good. <laughs> but then in, in parentheses, and this is where it gets kind of meta, <coughs> this woman writes, personal message from me, all caps, not automated. 
Okay? And, but then the next part is, I'm so very excited to share with you the story behind I, how I retired at the age of 32. <laughs> so let's think about this for a minute, right? This is meta, because here you have a person who is self-conscious about sending automated messages, but not to the sense that it actually stops them from sending an automated message. But they had to tweak that in there to again hope that I can repress my critical thinking skills <laughs> to say, yes, she just happens to think I want to hear about how she retired early at the age of 32 <laughs> and uh, how I should be involved. This is the common issue we get with, with social media, is that we repress our own human kind of intuition and the complexity of, of our emotional relationships. Here's another very common example since, since most of you are on Twitter. Well, one thing that bothers me about, about Twitter is a lot of people, a lot of marketers, right? A lot of marketers take the strategy of following somebody, getting that person to follow them back because it's very human to be reciprocal, right? To follow somebody back, egalitarian. And then after they follow them back, they unfollow them. Mm -hmm. So I told them this and I said how this was obviously an ethical misfire. And he said, that's a great idea. <laughs> I'm going to start following a bunch of people. Uh, also, probably, I don't know how much time we have, probably running a little low on time, but uh, what we've done for this, I worked with a, an ad agency on it, is we have these six steps of humanized branding. Right? We kind of broke all this down. And what they are is one, these personality traits, but also how are you conversing online, as we were just talking about. You want to have that fluid conversation as opposed to being one-sided. Because when we're here today, if, if I was just talking at you, but not paying attention to your feedback, your nonverbal cues, then that's not a conversation. Go to datablebrand.com, you will find out uh, if we'll marry your brand. All right, thank you. <laughs>